Okay, so today we're going to be looking at inverse functions, which is essentially just rearranging an equation. Okay, it's not too dissimilar to that whole concept. Okay, so this whole functions topic's really just been substitution and rearranging if you break it down to its core basics. Um, so let's have a look at an example. So here I've got the function uh, f of x equals 3x minus 2. So I started with x. I times it by 3, which is the 3x bit, and then I subtract 2, so I get the function f of x equals 3x minus 2. Now, I don't want to start with that, I basically want to reverse it all. So I want to start with x, and instead of minusing 2, I want to plus 2. Now this is just a state type of rearranging, so I want to plus 2. Okay, so I get x plus 2. And instead of timesing by 3, I want to divide by 3. Okay, which gives me the x plus 2 divided by 3. Okay, so that's just a really basic sort of rearranging one. So let's have a look at an example that we can do from scratch. So let's have a look here. Um, so I would always sort of really recommend the function machine because it's really useful for re rearranging equations like this and sort of basic equations. So we're starting with x with this one. So see, um, we've got an example f of x a equals 2x plus 3 equals 5. Um, now I'll show this in two ways. We'll do it the function machine way and then we'll do it a more formal way. Um, so we're going to start with x and I've got to think, well, what's the first thing I've done to x? Well, I've got 2x there, so I've times by 2. And what's the next thing I've done? Well, on the top I've got plus 3. And then I had to divide by 5. Okay, and that gave me that function fx 2x plus 3 over 5, okay? But I want the inverse function, so I need to reverse it. So I'm going to start with x on this end. Instead of dividing by 5, I'm going to be timesing by 5. Instead of adding 3, I'm going to minus 3. And instead of timesing by 2, I'm going to divide by 2. So x times by 5 gives me 5x. Minus 3 gives me 5x minus 3, divide by 2, so my answer is 5x minus 3 over 2. Okay, so f to the minus 1, which represents the inverse function, is just going to be 5x minus 3 divided by 2. Okay, so, and we can just quickly check our answer down here, super. So this is the other way of doing it, sort of the more formal way. Um, so we had our function here where f, f of x is 2x plus 3 equals 5, uh, divided by 5. So instead of the f of x, I've just written it down as y, um, because we're used to dealing with things like that. Um, and we're just going to rearrange it to make x the subject. So first things first, I want to get rid of that, that divide by 5, which means I do the opposite. So I times by 5. And we're left with 5y equals 2x plus 3. Then I've got to get rid of that plus 3. So I have to subtract the 3 uh, on both sides, not forgetting. Um, so I'm left with 5y minus 3 equals 2x. And then I've got to get rid of that 2 in front of the x, which means I've got to divide by 2 on both sides to keep it all balanced. So I'm now left with um, x equals 5y minus 3 divided by 2. Okay, but obviously that's not in the function format, so all I need to do is replace the x here with the f to the minus 1 of x, and the y that I've got in my equation here I just need to turn back to an x. Okay, Now, in a way, it's a bit more complicated with having to change some letters around and everything this way, Okay, but it's up to you which method you use there. You can use the function machine way, which is sort of nice and easy to follow, or if you're confident, probably this way might work out a little bit quicker for some of you in your heads and things like that um, or it might just make a bit more sense to you it's up to you okay so can you have a go at this one here okay and see how you get on once you so if you pause the video and then once you're ready press play okay so let's have a look at this one together and um, so I'm just going to do it the function machine way um, because I think that way for me is actually nice and clear. So uh, we're going to start with x 
And what's the first thing we've done to x here? Well, in bid mass, we would have squared it. Okay, so we've squared it. What's the next thing we've done? Well, then we've times by 3. And then we subtract 8. So that means our function of x was 3x squared minus 8. But again, we want the inverse function, so we want to reverse all of that. So we're starting with x, and instead of minusing 8, we'll plus 8. Instead of timesing by 3, we'll divide by 3. And instead of squaring, we're going to do the opposite of that, so that's square root. Okay, and that will give me my inverse function. So let's have a look. Uh, x plus 8. So we've got x plus 8. Cool. Uh, divide by 3. So x plus 8 divided by 3. And then square rooted. So my f to the minus 1 of x is x plus 8 divided by 3 all inside a square root. Okay, and that would be my final answer there. Okay, so that's the inverse function of 3x squared minus 8. Okay, is that in green there? Square root of x plus 8 divided by 3. All right, and again, so there's the other method for doing that as well for you. Um, so we do get some slightly trickier ones here as well. Okay, um, which we've got to be a bit more careful with because these involve a bit of uh, factorising and stuff like that. Now, I might come back to those um, just so we're not overcomplicating things. Okay, um, so if you want to skip past this bit, please do um, and just try some of the basics. Otherwise, we'll go through it now. Um, so, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do this this way doesn't really work too well with the function machine okay um because you can see we've got an x on the top and the bottom so we're sort of getting a bit more tricky here so i'm going to give myself plenty of space here and sort of start on the top right here um so i'm going to do it using the balancing method so you have to be confident with the balancing method to sort of get this type of question so i'm going to change the f of x to a y um, and then rewrite it out. So, <clears throat> first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of that bottom bit. Okay, so we need to times by that whole bottom part of my fraction. So I've got y 2x minus 3 equals x plus 5. And I get that just from timesing by 2x minus 3 times by 2x. So it's that whole bottom part of the fraction I've just multiplied both sides by. Okay, if I expand that bracket, okay, I get y uh, two y x minus three y equals x plus five. Now I still need to get all the x's onto one side, okay, and all the y's onto the other. So I'm going to get rid of the three y first. So I need to plus three y to get rid of that. So I've got 2yx equals x plus 5 plus 3y. Now let's get rid of that x. So minus x. Now I'm going to have to move over onto the far left here now. So 2yx minus x equals 5 plus 3y. Now... I can't do anything with that 2yx and that minus x at the moment, so I need to factorise. So what's in common in both? Well, there's an x in both. Okay, so let's put that on the outside of the bracket. Inside, x times what gives me 2yx? So 2y, x times what gives me minus x? Well, that's minus 1. Equals 5 plus 3y. So now I've got only one x I can see in my equation, so I can divide by that whole bracket. So x... Uh, sorry, I'll just show that I'm dividing by 2y minus 1, dividing by 2y minus 1. So x, um, let's give myself a bit of space, x equals 5 plus 3y over 2y minus 1. 
Okay, and now we're just in the stage where we need to replace the y's with an x and the x there with the f to the minus 1. x equals 5 plus 3x over 2x minus 1. So that there is our final answer. So this here is where it gets really tricky. Okay, because we are dealing with harder rearranging questions. Okay. So only try these types of questions where you've got an X appear more than once if you are confident with rearranging. Okay. Okay, there's it a bit clearly, a bit more clearly laid out. Okay. It's exactly the same method as what I've just done, just a bit um nicer laid out. Okay, I think they've combined a few steps. Um so um here's a uh, a few questions that I'd like you to have a go at. So show your workings clearly. So there's, um, I'd probably say those first two are perfectly accessible for everyone. And that last one is the super challenging one. And so just pause the video, have a go at that. And when you're ready, press play. Okay, so here are the answers for those questions. Okay, um, so hopefully you got those right. Um, so what I'd like you to do okay is there is now a worksheet on inverse functions that i'd like you to have a go at um and then work through some of those questions for me okay any problems do make sure to let your teacher know um thank you very much for watching and this is the last lesson on functions um might have a bit more general practice sort of uh coming up but yeah thank you very much